Hi everyone, welcome to the next Ivy picture and we have another um, cute little flower to do today. Um, I thought I would do this in um, blues. We have got two blue flowers already but we've got a lot of florals here. We're going to be using a lot of um, different colours. I thought we might go for sort of um, ultramarine or something like that, slightly purpley blues and have a go at that really and see how that turns out. So I have grabbed my ultramarine violet and I'm just going to make a start and I will show you where I want to put the darker. This is going to be my darkest colour and I'm going to pop quite a lot of dark colour down at the bottom here and then reduce it as I go up the bed. And the same here. I think the ones on the sides would be slightly darker just because they're slightly around the corner they'd be slightly more sh shaded and shadowed and the ones at the back would have some shadow down here where they're sort of inside that looks quite inky doesn't it that colour a bit like a big pyro and let me just have a look at what colour I want to put with that I think we have an ultramarine light so let's go with that and see where that takes us so I don't have a um, swatches of these I have ju only just discovered the advantages of swatching I've always always said that I don't swatch because um, it takes too much time and I just want to dive in which is still very true um, but I found some advantages when I had the Castle Arts metallic pencils. The um, the dipped tips colours didn't really reflect the colours of the tops and they were all very similar. So I used the swatch chart that came with them just so that it was easier for me to know which colour was which when I was sort of grabbing one. And then I also swatched the Castle Arts gold when I got those just again because there was a swatch chart. And uh, it means um, you don't have to sort of take time to get used to what colours what. You can sort of just look at the swatch and you know. Now you can see I've got, I've actually got the colour I want there. But I've got quite a lot of white paper showing through. So what I'm going to do is go back and go back over exactly what I've done already. And um, I'm just sharpening. And I uh, do it again to just um, darken yeah, and, and sort of um, and burnish really gets more colour down on the paper. I can emphasise the shadow between those petals a little more now as well. I do have a little mark in the paper here. There we go. Sometimes you have to colour a different direction just to get rid of those sometimes you can't get rid of them it's um it's like a little um, scratch or something in the paper so the pencil doesn't quite lay as you might hope now I'm not going to do too much more of that it's a very dark pencil and we use the ultramarine light again just to uh, just to uh, finish off really now I haven't really thought about what to do with these little teardrop shaped areas which is why I haven't coloured over them just in case I wanted them pale because of course you can use a white pen but because I haven't swatched these and played I don't know what will happen some of the Castle Arts blues go pink when you put white pen over them and what I did with my swatch chart I did show in a very recent previous video I put a little blob of white pen on top of every swatch of my Castle Arts gold and it allowed no and the metallic and it allowed me to see which ones would turn um, pink which was very useful and I'm actually going to do that with my other pencils too at some point I haven't actually got swatch charts and things sorted yet but I know the polychromos and the Stella Ergosofts they never, they hold a white colour perfectly, so there's no su nasty surprises there. But, uh, and I know there are um, whitening products you can get which don't um, 
ever change colour. I'm just looking for a blending pencil. Got one here. I'm just cleaning the cleaning it off because I want those tips of the flowers to look I don't want the paper to be sh I seem to be breaking everything I sharpen today I don't want the tips of the um, the flowers to be any darker but there's too much paper showing through for my liking my pencil sharpness full that's why um, I haven't got another, oops I haven't got another one in here so just use a different blender. Um, that one is a, that one's a bit sharper. Oh. I've got to clean this one because it's pink. Okay, this is a Prisma blender. I'm just going to try and tidy up a little bit. Some blenders work better with certain brands of pencil I have found. I find the Caran Dash blender doesn't work with certain brands. It was interesting because I bought a, I think it's Lyra Splendor blender or something, and it didn't work with Polychromos or Ergosoft. It was rubbish. I um, I don't know what I did with it. I thought I gave it to my husband. <laughs> that was kind of me, wasn't it? I don't know if he got it working, but and I now I realise it probably works with certain brands of pencil. Now our little teardrop shape's gone a bit blue. So I'm going to risk using a white pen on them. Um, I used the Jelly Roll um, 08. I think that'll be about the right size nib. Now normally I would leave this to very last, but I'm going to be colouring this stem underneath. So hopefully um, it won't um, smudge. Hopefully I won't put my hand on top of it. You never know, but hopefully not. There we go. They look a little bit whiter. Now, the um, stems. Now, we can do any colour stem, of course, that we wish. But I tend to go for a more bluey colour green, a bluey green, um, when I'm doing a blue flower. And I think it just sort of works better. So I'm actually going to start with the teal green light, which is actually quite a blue colour and do a layer of this first across all of the petals and then we'll bring in some darker colours in a moment. There we go, so we've just done a layer of that everywhere. Now I'm going to use the Viridian, I can't sharpen anything because my sharpness full but um, I think this one's okay and um, put in some darker colour in the areas where I think there would be shadow and then just fade it off so where they're overlapping and where the petal is providing shade it's going to do that oh, my son is talking he's in the other room he's very loud quite funny and then a little bit here and the same on the end one. Now with the stem I'm going to do a bit of shadow from that petal. I'm actually going to go do a little bit either side, quite a hard layer each side and then gently bring that in and hopefully it will make it look a little bit more rounded. It's got a bit of light in the middle and quite hard edges. I'm going to really try and go over the top of that black line quite hard. There we go. There. I'm going to leave that there. I'm quite happy with that. I don't want to fill it with it anymore apart from that bit of white there. There we go. So I'm going to finish there. So I hope that was okay for you. I had great fun with that one. Pleased with it. You could, just looking at it in my camera, those little teardrops that we did in white, they might look quite nice in a bright yellow Posca. Just an idea. What Yellow and blue they work quite well. Anyway, that's me. I'm going to go now. Um, thank you very much for watching. 
Um, I hope that was okay for you. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy colouring.